the Blazers hit the absolute jackpot when the Charlotte Hornets did pass up on Scoot Henderson for Brandon Miller. They did something, I believe, which although, listen, is obviously not the same at all, is somewhat reminiscent of the San Antonio Spurs drafting Tim Duncan while still having David Robinson on their roster. What I mean by this is having the ability to draft your future franchise cornerstone while your current franchise cornerstone is still on the roster. While Wemby got the media attention and deservingly so, Scoot is a prospect who could have gone number one overall in many other drafts. The Blazers managed to go and get the guy that you would go out and tank for, you know, a guy that you would completely reset everything and tear it down and go, you know, into the lottery to try and get while keeping their core and their obviously their big star in Damian Lillard. And this begs the question, will they now go the path of moving in all likelihood Anthony si Anthony Anthony Simons and picks for a star such as a Zach Levine or a Paul George or you know m maybe some other guys maybe a Pascal Siakam and some role players or will they do what many think is finally going to happen and finally trade Damian Lillard and completely build around Scoot Henderson and move for the future today I'm going to be diving into the two paths that Portland does have to choose from and why in all honesty at this point after getting Scoot Henderson I don't think either is going to be really really that bad First of all, let's get into the man who gave Portland these options in Scoot Henderson. He has shown immense flashes of being able to create rim pressure and create for his teammates a la Russell Westbrook or John Morant. Obviously, he's his own player, but, you know, general player comps is something that helps people that may not know much about Scoot, you know, kind of get a grasp on what, you know, his overall game is kind of going to be like. He averaged 18, 5, and 7 on 57% true shooting in the G League last year. And again, one thing about the G League is that he was playing against grown professionals that do this for their job and a whole lot of NBA talent while you know this this league is likely comparable to the Euro League and the Euro League may actually be above it it is definitely you know both of those leagues are superior to the college ranks in quality of competition obviously it's not the NBA yet but you know it's pretty much as close as you're gonna get and since this video isn't just about scoot it's more about what the Blazers can now do that they have scoot you know, I, I'm not going to keep talking about him. All I can really say is, you know, go watch him play and obviously watch him play this season. And y'all are going to see that Scoot Henderson is definitely a big part of the future of the NBA. And he will be ready to contribute immediately. This also ties into his G League thing. It makes him more NBA ready. He will have more of an ability to be a contributor immediately if the Blazers do want to, you know, go for it right now and keep Damian Lillard. And he could definitely, you know, fill the role of Anthony Simons while providing more of an all-around game there alongside Damian Lillard at the guard spot. Next up, we are going to get into the paths that the Portland Trail Blazers do have. The first being to keep Damian Lillard and utilize the other assets you have. Anthony Simons, Yusuf Nurkic, and Nasir Little, and draft picks to make a move for a major star, and hopefully a role player or two. Now, if they really want to get crazy and, you know, really capitalize and build the best possible team right now, they could also start putting Shade and Sharp in some of these packages, and real if they're really, really, really trying to go for it, which in all honesty, like, I listen, you, you could definitely get a good amount of stuff for, you know, Anthony Simons, Yusuf Nurkic, and Nasir Little, who are all on pretty good contracts. And, you know, I believe the max that they can offer is three first round picks. They can, you know, offer swaps as well, some seconds. Obviously, you know, I think that they will, would be able to net a pretty, pretty good return for that package. Obviously, it would not be the Dame return, but, you know, this would help you compete right now. And listen... I understand the Blazers wanting to win with Dame, and now that you actually have a pathway to do it while not having to completely sacrifice the future and not know what's going to happen, I think, honestly, I think this is the route that they do take, and I'm, and honestly, I, I wouldn't be mad at it. You know, before they had Scoot, I was fully on the, on the board of like, man, just let it go, rebuild, let's go, like, but again, you get the guy you'd go tank for, and all of a sudden, you know, things can change, and you can, you know, hey, and another beautiful thing about this is that as Dame is declining, Scoot is going to be ascending. So it will be, you know, I mean, again, <laughs> I used the Tim Duncan example earlier, and I'm going to use the Magic and Kareem example right here. Obviously, these things are not the same, but it's just the general concept of, you know, someone declining and someone else improving or having the future and the present. You know what I mean? I I'm not, I'm not comparing these guys to Tim Duncan and Magic Johnson because I know, like, listen, I think most of you understand that. But there's a lot of people that are going to go to college and be like, oh, 
Oh, oh my god, did you really just compare Scoot Henderson to Tim Duncan? Did you really just compare uh, Scoot Henderson to Magic Johnson? Like, no, bro. But, hey, if that, like, listen, he is believed to have the potential to be, and I'm going to get more into this in my Brandon Miller video because, I, man, I, I, I cannot, I mean, I can believe it because it's the Hornets. And listen, I think Brandon Miller will be a great NBA player. But, like, the difference between Scoot and Brandon Miller is Scoot has MVP number one option on a championship team potential. Brandon Miller has all NBA and, you know, probably really, really good second option on a championship team or a, you know, really or a good first option on a, you know, a decent team potential. But, you know, those two things there are very different. And one trade that, you know, I'd like to get into is the Pascal Siakam potential trade. And Chris Haynes did recently come out with a report that said that Pascal Siakam would not commit to re-signing to anywhere that he is traded to. So, unless he changes his tone, if this is the direction the Raptors want to move in, the Portland Trailblazers could potentially capitalize on this. And maybe, listen, maybe th this might be pushing it. They might be able, it, listen, if Siakam's not going to commit to re-sign anywhere and the Raptors want to trade him, they might be able to get Siakam and OG for something along the lines of Anthony Simons, Yusuf Nurkic, Trendon Watford, three first round picks, and likely some swaps. Listen, even if that is wishful thinking, which it probably is, they could also get, you know, Pascal Siakam, Gary Trent Jr., and maybe, you know, some other guy. I'm not even, I mean, you know, Chris Boucher or something like, you know, some other role player there. Or another thing that they could do, which I think would really, really bolster them, would be you know, if you can't get Siakam and OG, which is probably wishful thinking, maybe you go out and get Siakam and bring Gary Trent Jr. home, and then you sign and trade Yusuf Nurkic for Jakob Pertl. I think that would really, 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 really make the Portland Trailblazers a serious, serious threat. But obviously, you know, Zach Levine, Paul George, or any of these other, you know, pretty much no matter what you get for, you know, si any, you know, any combination. I mean, it's going to be Simons and Picks. We know that. But then, you know, whether it's Nurkic or Watford or Nasir Little or whatever it is in there, I think you're going to be able to get a pretty good package that will make Portland be able to be competitive right now. And also, this path would definitely include re-signing Jeremy Grant. Which, listen, I know when we see $30 million, it's a lot. And yes, that contract still probably won't be great for them down the line. But guys are getting $55, $60 million a year nowadays on these Supermax extensions. It's like, again, I understand, right? Like, I personally probably wouldn't pay Jeremy Grant five one fifty, dollars But it's the way the league's going. Like, it's probably going to happen. And in all honesty, if the Blazers are doing this and, you know, they make their move... And match those salaries and it's not a cap issue and you know it's not like they're sacrificing anything they're just bringing jeremy grant back on top unless they want to just go opt for more role players hey but like i said a a dame scoot og slash gary trent siakam and Jakob pertle starting five with you know a pretty solid bench which i will get into later is definitely hey i mean listen is it championship favorite you know that's really hard to do but is it a really 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 good team absolutely now it is time to get into the next path, one that which may be a really, really tough pill to swallow for the Portland front office. I'm not even going to say Portland fans because at this point, I think Portland fans, I mean, listen, as I detailed earlier with Scoot and that whole path, that could definitely work out. But I think a lot of Portland fans have been ready to rebuild for some time now and have been worried about, you know, maybe, you know, if they didn't get Scoot and you hold on to Dame for a couple more years and don't really get much of anything for him at age 34 or something. And, you know, like, obviously, yeah, like, like, they, that could go badly. But we're going to get right into this. Obviously, this path means trading Damian Lillard. And the current assumed destination is the Miami Heat, as Portland wouldn't want to trade him to the West, and Miami is believed to be his preferred Eastern Conference destination. He said he didn't want to go to Boston. He hasn't said anything about, I mean, I mean he hasn't said anything about, about Milwaukee or Philly, I don't believe. I mean, I know he, you know, he, he talks about Joel a lot. So, you know, again, my, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get into my, uh, you know, my fantasy in a little bit. But first off, to get into what is, you know, writing is on the wall is probably going to happen in all honesty if I had to say something right now. And uh, another thing about this is that it's dependent upon, obviously, you know, th the Blazers are going to get a haul. But this is dependent upon where Dame wants to go. And not just the best package that Portland will be offered because, you know, the franchise is going to do good by him. They are going to send him where he wants to go. And they are going to work that out. It's not just going to be a bidding war for, you know, the best package and they're just going to send him wherever. Anyways, 
that Miami package would probably be something along the lines of Tyler Hero, Caleb Martin, Nikolajovic, maybe Jaime Jaquez Jr., and three first-round picks. And this will beg the question of, you know, obviously that leaves you with Scoot, Simons, and Hero. And which one do you decide on? If they decide on Anthony Simons, this could become a three-team deal with Tyler Hero heading somewhere else for some other young players and draft capital, or they would separately trade Anthony Simons, likely for some young players. Another thing I would do, although he could be a really good role player for the future, and he's only, I do believe he's only 27 years old, you could cash in on Caleb Martin right now for draft capital. Obviously, his value is probably the highest it will ever be. Uh, you know, unless he wants to prove me wrong and, you know, potentially develop into a star alongside this Blazers young core and maybe, hey, then you keep him. But I, I do believe he has this year on his contract for about $6 million and then as a player option next summer that no matter what, he will be declining. I mean, even if he has a really, really bad season, I feel like someone's going to give him at least 10 basis on, you know, last playoffs. But now that we're done with that, let's get into my Philadelphia fantasy. Now let's say for some reason, right, Dame says either one, he just wants to come to Philly, or two, he says Miami or Philly, and Portland is really, really enticed by the idea of putting Tyrese Maxey next to an elite playmaker in Scoot Henderson, a la a James Harden, as well as our 2029 pick, which is, you know, again, very valuable right now, and would definitely become more valuable exchanging a 22-year-old Maxey for a 32-year-old Dame. They would also get Tobias' expiring deal to make contracts work. That's the only way for that to work. DeAnthony Melton, who they could keep, who could, again, also be another great role player for the future for them, or someone who they could probably get a first-round pick for, as well as Jaden Springer, who's a very young guy, perfect for a rebuild, believed to have some potential, could definitely be a rotation piece. And Dame said he wouldn't go to Boston, as we said earlier, and we have not, I mean, we haven't really heard anything on the field. Again, man, it's going to be Miami, but just let me dream real quick. Please just let me dream real quick, you know? <laughs> I don't know, man. But, you know, no matter what deal they take, this would leave Portland with, you know, three young guards in Scoot, Simons, and Hero, or Maxi. While trading, you know, I'd probably move off one, you know, for draft capital or a young big, you know, or, you know, whether it's, you know, you move off one of them for draft capital and then get a young big and it's indirect, or you directly go and trade one of them for a young big, that would probably be the path I take there. But they also have Shaden Sharp, Nasir Little, Chris Murray, and Trendon Watford, who are all very young, and all of their own picks on top of whatever draft capital they would get from a Dame trade, the Portland Trailblazers are set up for the future really, really well if they do decide to go rebuild. However, now that they have their guy for the future and the pathway to, you know, really build a contender around Dame, if they want to do that and try one last time and try and get this guy to win in Portland, I can't really get mad at them now. You know, if they didn't get Scoot Henderson, I would have been a little bit mad at them because it's like you're forcing it. Well, if they got Scoot Henderson and didn't trade whatever pick they got, or if, if, excuse me, if they didn't get Scoot Henderson and didn't trade whatever pick they got, it would just show me that, you know, they're not really being serious. But, I mean, hey, like, listen, Portland could definitely become a real threat in this offseason, depending on what happens. You know, I mean, they're definitely going to be a real threat in the future with Scoot Henderson. It just depends on, you know, if that is right now or if it's going to be in, you know, three or, or Honestly, I think they could get it together in two years. I'm not going to lie. I think they could get it together in two years. They have a lot of the role player core. They have their star guy. They're, they, you know, have another, you know, you know, they'd have a star backcourt no matter what. And they'd also have Shaden Sharp who could, you know, be their star wing, and all they really need is just a young big man, and hey, I mean, listen, I think Portland fans have a lot, a lot to be excited about right now, and no matter which way y'all go, y'all are gonna have some exciting stuff going on here in the coming years, in all honesty, like, I think they're gonna try and do it with Dame, which is, again, it might not be the best decision, I personally think that, you know, you do that rebuild, and, you know, you, I mean, I think they could come out on the back end of it really, really strong. But if you can, I mean, listen, this might be wishful thinking, but we're actually, oh, wait, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you, you could probably get, you know, again, the OG was wishful thinking. But if you could get a Dame, Scoot, Grant, Siakam, Pirtle starting five with Shading, Gary Trent Jr., Nasir Little, Trendon Watford, Drew Eubanks, and Matisse Thibault off the bench, that sounds like a pretty good rotation. I mean, you obviously could get, you know, you know, they probably want to go pick up another, you know, point guard for the bench, but then again, you could also just stagger Damon Scoot, and you know, I mean, obviously, they, they will pick up another guard, uh, another ball handling point guard for the bench, inevitably, like, you're gonna want it, but, you know, they, they can just stagger Damon Scoot a good amount, and that will help out, but 
you know, I, I think this is going to wrap this one up. You know, I think I got into everything that I really wanted to talk about in regards to the Portland Trailblazers. You know, they have two very, very different paths that they can take right now. Or they could potentially trade Scoot, which I don't think will happen. Uh, apparently, Dame and Scoot were texting before the draft. So, I don't... Again, it's not out of the cards, I guess. Uh, if a team, you know, kind of realizes that they messed up and that they... Because, man, I don't know, like... Apparently, Portland really, really liked Eamon Thompson. And yes, Eamon, like, if I was Houston, I, I would have traded up to get Scoot Henderson. Or if I was Detroit, or, or maybe not Detroit because they have Caden Ivy. But if I was Houston or, you know, maybe even Orlando. I mean, I know Orlando has a ton of guards, but they just drafted another guard too. So, you know, again, if I was one of these teams, I low-key would have tried to move up and try and get Scoot. So I guess, I mean, or, or may, maybe you could have, you know, a package from somewhere but who knows man i mean i'm really waiting for this trade season i mean it did get underway kind of you know you got porzingis and jordan Poole and chris paul and bradley beal and all that yeah 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 it kind of did all right it kind of did it kind of did but you know man i'm waiting for stuff to really get into swing fully but like i said that is gonna wrap this one up if y'all enjoyed it please like it up sub the channel helps me out a ton comment any video ideas y'all got down below you know i'm gonna be going through most of these high lottery you know, lower tier teams right now because, you know, again, I think I have a Houston Rockets video coming up. I just posted a Spurs video, which is crazy. Uh, if you're a Western Conference fan, I might recommend not watching it because it might just make, yeah, it, might, it might just make you sad. Uh, but no, no, man, all jokes aside, that was a fire video. Go check that one out. But no, I got the Houston video coming up. Uh, I'm, I, like I said, I'm going to do a Hornets video and then obviously as we get into free agency, you know, I'll start focusing more on that. But I did kind of just want to get into the future of a lot of these young teams at the top of this draft this year. Cause I think that these teams like really all have, I mean, whether they got their cornerstone, you know, their young cornerstone in this draft or a past draft, you know, man, I think San Antonio, Portland, Houston, I mean, even Charlotte, right? Like, like Charlotte's still going to be good. LaMelo is absolutely leap of man. Charlotte was school. And people are like, oh, school. Oh, they're, they're two point guards. It wouldn't have worked. Like, bro, I hate y'all so much. I swear. Like, oh my God. Do y'all really not understand this at this point? You can have two elite ball handlers. It helps. I promise you. It, especially when you have a guy like LaMelo Ball, who's, I, I, I got to save all this for the Hornets video. I got to save all this for the Hornets video. But this is, just, I mean, man. And this is why, like, I don't know, like, I like making this kind of content because it's stuff like, yeah, like, you know, I'm, I'm most of the stuff I'm displaying is factual and circumstantial, but it's also, like, there's stuff that I feel strongly about. And you know what? I, 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 I you know what I mean? Like, I, I should get to let that out. <laughs> I don't really know, man, but once again, if y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, and I am out. Peace.